I have two big problems. I am starting to get overwhelmed by the art that I've created and it's just sitting in my studio. I need to either give it away or sell it. Obviously, I would prefer to sell it. And while I've been doing the research on Etsy and other platforms to sell art, I have found that it is very hard to stand out. Now, me personally, because I have this channel, I have a little bit of an easier time because I can promote to my audience, which is quite large. For regular acrylic pour artists, they might not have that. So we need something to differentiate ourselves. And one of the things I thought about was if I could provide a relatively inexpensive frame that would really just amplify how beautiful the art is. So I wanna try and find a way to do that. The second thing is I have some art that I want to hang on my wall. One of my favorite pieces that I did a long time ago is here, and I wanna put it on my wall, but I don't want to just put it on just like this. I think it looks so much better with a frame. So I'm going to try and find a way to create a relatively inexpensive frame and so I can frame my own art and potentially have it as an upsell for all of this art that I need to get out of my studio. Now the first place I generally look for inexpensive options is the local thrift store. There are usually a lot of frames and if you're only looking for one or two, that might be the best option for you. In this case, I want something that I can have on demand, so I don't think it's going to work. So the next place is my local hardware store. We have a Lowe's close to my house, so I went to the molding section to see if I couldn't find something that might fit. Now there were lots of L-looking pieces that might work for this, both of the wood variety and the PVC variety, but most of them were way too deep until I found this continental corner molding, which looked like it was going to work perfectly. It didn't rise up too high and it was wide enough to allow for an offset painting to screw into the bottom while leaving a gap between the frame and the painting. So I took that over to my brother's house who has a bit of a wood shop and started cutting it down. Now, when I cut the side pieces, I did end up cutting them a little too short. So this is more like a normal frame than a floating frame. But in this case, I was just trying to see what would work and how much it would cost to do it myself. I cut four equal pieces and then drilled a hole about a quarter of an inch from the end on all four right in the middle so I could either nail or screw down the painting once the frame was put together. Now I had tacky glue that I'd purchased before and I thought this would work. So I glued up all the corners, made sure they were as flush as possible, although they weren't perfectly flush. Again, this is a proof of concept and then my brother had these corner holders and I let that dry for about four hours. Unfortunately, that fell apart as soon as I moved it. So that glue just was not going to work. So what I did was borrowed some professional super glue that my brother uses in the shop. Supposedly it dries very fast and is very strong. I've seen good things. So I put that on the four corners and I left it for only about 20 minutes. And man, this was so much stronger than the tacky glue that I tried before. Uh, I pulled pretty hard and it didn't do anything on the corners. Then I tried to put the screws in the back. I just used some screws that I had on handed and they were probably way too big and I probably want to use nails next time. I had to do a countersink so the outside of the screw was flush with the wood or else it would scratch the wall as it hangs there. And so I put the painting in, got it as close as possible, and with the new countersunk holes, put all of the nails in to mount it. So here you can see the finished product. There's a couple of things that I would do differently. I would leave a larger gap in between, so rather than be a normal, normal frame, it would be a floating frame, so maybe another quarter inch on each side. So I'd have that gap there. I would also take a little bit more time with the corners. I mean, the corners don't look bad at all. This one looks great. But I'd take a little more time just to, to line them up a little bit better. I 
would these these screws actually are pretty flat but just in case i would either countersink them a little bit more or maybe use little nails instead so i could put them all the way into the wood there you can see right there how it wasn't quite lined up but most of the other ones are much nicer uh, i would also have put this on a table so that i could screw it in from underneath um, after I put shims in each side, so I got the same distance on all four corners. And even as it was, this cost about $4.25. It's about $4 for this. And I added $0.25 cents for the little bit of glue and the, the screws that I used to make my own frame. And even like this, as a rough draft, it looks great. And I think it really accentuates how this painting looks and just makes this look more professional. And like I said before, I think this would sell even better than the painting by itself. There's a couple things I could do to make it cheaper, buy, buy items in bulk, um, buy the tw 12 foot instead of the eight foot of the, this L-shaped L uh, corner molding. But overall, I am very excited for what I could potentially do going forward and for this added bonus when I go to sell these paintings, either include this automatically or have it be an upsell for the painting. And if you'd like to see how I made this pour with a barbecue grill, this is the video for you.